Today, I'm going to show you how I record electronic music gear without a computer. Freebeat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Be sure to check out my upcoming free live stream concert, Freebeat Live, the next level. It's going to be a ton of fun. If you want to have your music featured in the show, you only have a few days left to submit your track. So be sure to click the link in the description to learn more. Today's patron shout-out goes to Andrew Apinov. Thank you so very much for the support. Let's get started. So here on the channel, I try to focus mainly on electronic music gear, the hardware. And uh, specifically, I like to focus on budget electronic music gear. Now, that means that there are a lot of newcomers to electronic music who uh, check out my channel quite frequently. And uh, that's awesome. I myself am basically a newcomer to electronic music. I've only been in this scene for about three years. Uh, so I really, really do appreciate when uh, newcomers come and check out the videos. And because I have so many beginners and newcomers to this awesome world, uh, you know, on my channel, I often see the comment or the email uh, that reads something like this. You know, I just got my hands on a couple pocket operators or a Korg Volca or, you know, whatever piece of music gear, and I just actually wrote a song or a track that I really, really like. How do I record it? And that actually led me to discover that there is not a lot of content available talking about uh, the actual uh, gear you use, you know, to record your electronic music gear. There's a ton about sound design, there's a ton about uh, songwriting, there's a ton about, like, mixing and mastering, but the actual process of getting the audio from your electronic music gear into a recorded place is kind of undercovered. So that's what we're going to look at today. And of course, because I mostly cover hardware here and try to stay away from the computer side of things, I'm going to show you how I record that audio without a computer. So yes, I will just say right now, uh, you can go pick up a pretty decent audio interface uh, for a computer for around 100 US dollars or so, plug your gear into it, fire up a free DAW, and you're good to go. Uh, but we're gonna skip the computer today. We're going with a complete hardware solution, specifically two hardware solutions. Okay, so uh, welcome to Behind the Scenes here at Freebeat. Uh, right now you are looking at the main way that I record audio for the channel. This is the Zoom LiveTrack L12. Uh, for context, here you go. There's the main filming desk. There's the tripod that you normally sit on. Here's the microphone I'm talking into right now. Uh, please ignore the suboptimal lighting. But yeah, this is the Zoom LiveTrack L12, and this is my all-in-one audio solution for the channel. This handles everything from being my audio interface to being my mixer to my recorder to my uh, live mixer, actually, for the live shows. We actually use this as well. Uh, it does everything, and it's actually what you're hearing right now. So, like I said, this is a mixer. It's got 12 inputs. It's got a whole bunch of uh, different outputs there. It's also an audio interface. It's uh, currently plugged into my computer right now, too, although we're not going to be using any of that functionality. And most importantly, for me anyway, it's also a recorder. So in the back of this unit, there is an SD card. And any of these inputs here that I plug in can record straight to that SD card. Right now, you are hearing me talk through my microphone here, which is actually plugged into line eight, which every time I talk, you can see, you can see the meter going, yep, there we go. Uh, that is currently recording to an SD card. If we look at the screen here, hopefully you can see that. Uh, but yeah, we are recording that audio straight to an SD card. Uh, I have it armed for playback. You can arm each of the uh, 12 tracks individually, which is really, really cool. And uh, it just makes recording super, super easy. This is the biggest upgrade the channel has probably ever gotten. I got it last year, uh, and if this broke, I would instantly get another one. It's that powerful. It does a whole bunch of other stuff too, but today we're just talking about recording audio. However, this is an almost 700 US dollar device, and I'm not expecting beginners to go out there and spend $700 on an audio recorder. Uh, if I didn't have the YouTube channel, I don't know if I would have this. They actually make um, the Zoom L8, which has uh, just eight inputs, and I believe it's quite a bit more affordable. Um, so yeah, this is just uh, how I record audio for the channel. I figured I would show it. I've shown it uh, several times in the past, but uh, yep, it's what I use. 
Also, I should mention right here are my uh, Shure SE215s. Those are my in-ear monitors that I wear coming out of one of the headphone outputs there. Uh, that's what I wear when uh, recording audio. Um, they work great. And uh, yeah, this is that setup. So like I said, the Livetrack L12 uh, costs almost 700 US dollars. That's a bit of money. And uh, if you're just starting out, you probably don't want to drop that much cash on uh, recording your audio. Well, before I had the Livetrack L12, I used this. This is the Zoom H5. It's actually very similar to the Livetrack L12 in terms of what it does. It can function as a mixer if you need it to, it can function as an audio interface if you need it to, and again, most importantly, it can record all four of its tracks to an SD card. Now, like I just said, this has four tracks instead of 12, like the uh, Livetrack L12 does, and uh, that makes this guy quite a bit smaller. But one of the benefits of it being so small is that it can run on a pair of AA batteries. Battery life is okay. I'm using some rechargeable ones here, and I get about two to three hours uh, per each pair of rechargeable batteries, which, uh, let's be honest, if you're out in the field, three hours is a long time. <laughs> like, in actual practice of recording, that's quite a while. It's got a separate line out and headphone out, which is really cool. It's got an SD card slot, and uh, I unfortunately broke the little cover off. Uh, I really put this thing through the ringer for the first uh, couple years I had it. Uh, and that's because this actually handled all of the audio for the channel before I got the live track L12. Like, all of it including the live shows. With this USB port here, it can actually function as an audio interface uh, with your computer, which is also really powerful. But let's look at the main attractions here, the inputs. So down on the bottom, you have two XLR slash quarter inch combo jacks. These can either be a quarter inch input or an XLR input. And each of these inputs can provide phantom power should your device need it, which is really handy. So those are inputs one and two, and they are labeled as such. Now up top is where things get a little interesting. You can see we have an L and an R label, as well as what appears to be an XY microphone, which is exactly what it is. This is a stereo microphone up top, and uh, it counts as inputs three and four. It's a pretty solid microphone, and Zoom actually includes this little uh, windscreen pop filter thing, so you can actually use this, you know, as you're recording and uh, use it as your primary microphone. But what if you don't want a microphone? What if you want more inputs? Well, we've got two solutions. The first one is built in, and it comes in the form of this three and a half millimeter stereo input jack right here. This acts as a stereo input, so inputs three and four together. This is how you're gonna record like pocket operators, uh, Volcas, really anything with a three and a half uh, millimeter headphone jack or audio out. This is a great way to record those devices. You simply plug it in. It does uh, override the microphone, so you have to choose either the microphone or this input, but uh, yeah, it does work really nicely. Or you can actually remove this whole microphone module, as they call it, entirely. This uh, little wheel, by the way, is the gain control for the mic. Um, but you can take this whole thing off and actually purchase a separate module that has another pair of quarter inch slash XLR combo jacks on it for a true number three and number four inputs. Really, really powerful, really handy. And I can't believe I didn't mention it yet, but yes, all four inputs can be recorded at the exact same time. So that's actually how I would film my old videos. I would have a microphone plugged in here. Uh, I really like this Movo LV4 uh, omnidirectional mic here. Plug it into input one and clip this to my shirt. And then I'd plug in my piece of gear. Uh, let's say, I don't know, the OPZ to this jack right here. And then I just turn it on. There's no SD card in there right now, so it'll give me a warning, but uh, you plug in the SD card and then I just arm input one and inputs three and four uh, or L and R because that actually arms the stereo uh, 3.5 mil jack there too. And then I'd hit record and we'd be off and running. It's that easy. Every track records to its own individual WAV file on the SD card, ready to be dropped in your computer for, in my case, editing in Premiere Pro, you know, syncing up with the uh, camera's video, or you could drop it into your DAW and start working that way. It's just a WAV file. You can do whatever you want with your audio. 
And there are a whole bunch of settings in the menu as well. I won't really get into them, but there's a ton you can do with this device. I will say price-wise, the Zoom H5 is about 300 US dollars new, which I know can still be a lot, especially for a beginner to electronic music, or just uh, this is a great tool to have in the world of music in general. However, I do think price to performance and price to features, this is your sweet spot. If you are serious about recording your music or content creation involving music or anything really revolving around multi-track audio and you want to get started uh, and you think you might need a little bit of portability, this is a fantastic device and I cannot recommend it highly enough. I'm also going to say right now, Zoom uh, is not affiliated with this video or channel. I have never actually contacted them really um, about any kind of, you know, even sponsorship or sending product. This is, uh, this is all me talking. I love these products. Now, like I said, 300 US dollars, it still might be a lot. So Zoom actually does make uh, the H1, which is about a $100 uh, product US. And it's basically just a microphone and a... Uh, 3.5 millimeter stereo line in and it's only technically two inputs So you have to pick between either the microphone or the input But if all you want to record is One device or if you're chaining a bunch of devices like pocket operators or Volcus together and you just have one master output That will still get the job done for you for about a hundred US dollars. Uh, you're just not going to be able to uh, Use multiple tracks at once, but yes the h1 still does record to SD card and uh, I think they're about a hundred and 20 new but they often go on sale for about a hundred US dollars so that's a great deal for a beginner as well. I will link all three of these products in the description below. Those will be Amazon affiliate links, which I never really talk about, but uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra. If you do use that link, I get like a teeny, 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 tiny bit of uh, commission, I guess we could call it. Just, uh, yeah, a little kickback. Goes right back into the channel, of course. Uh, well, paying rent at the apartment is pretty important, too. I, I guess that's for the channel. Keeps the roof over the head. <laughs> Either way, of course, it's greatly appreciated. So there you have it. That's how I record my electronic music gear without a computer. I use the Zoom LiveTrack L12 in the studio, and I use the Zoom H5 literally everywhere else. Please let me know if you have any questions, leave them in a comment down below, and I will do my best to answer them. I do hope you found this video informative, or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, you can always leave a dislike, that's okay too, doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.